Good evening, sports fans and fans of the GBA Season 7 Week 11. Only two more battles, including this one, left this season. We have had quite a losing streak, if you believe all that shit that's been happening in that virtual reality world you've been watching for the past many weeks. But now we take on the Alola Athletic and Callum, the man who started that fantasy little fantasy losing streak all those weeks ago we have gone and lost nine straight if you have no idea what my team is you should go watch my team builder video you can learn a lot about all the moves and the strategies that i plan on employing this week against calum and the Lowell athletic of course his team is as follows crobat rotom embor excadrill tyranitar and shaman that shaman is going to be a fucking problem as we, he's got that little little pose there. He's got some kind of weird. I can't do it. He's got a weird pose. So I would swap for I think he leaves anything but shame, and I can get stealth rocks up relatively easily. And he decides to leave with Crobat. That is one of those things I can get stealth rocks again up against relatively easily. I don't really fear a uh, super fang. I can kind of get you know a good idea of what kind of uh, Crobat this could be. He goes future and does a lot of damage, but he could be Adamant Scarf or Jolly Band. I'm not quite sure yet. He's in that range. We have to do more investigative work. He goes into Shaman, which is totally fine. We brought, and it's exactly why we brought that Licky Licky, just in case he brought Shaman, the one thing that the rest of the team couldn't really take on, Shaman could. And if he wants to get Elite Seed up, that's fine. I got plenty of switches and other stuff. And if, if, I, if I can convince him that I have Overcoat Como... Uh, he can, you know, he won't go through Elite Seed against that. Now, we kind of really want to see what moves sets he's moves he's going to be working with here. So I go to Licky Licky. We're kind of scouting, and he does go for the Leech Seed, so it leads me to believe he is defensive. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen an item yet. Obviously, I he's obviously, he obviously can't be Assault Vest. That's not the window. He could be Scarf, uh, or we've seen Leftovers. So, or we haven't seen Leftovers yet, but he's thinking he could be Scarf uh, with Leech Seed. He he goes into Shaman. I think at some point later we see Leftovers. I looked away and thought that I damage to it. Not yet, but. He ends up being leftovers, uh, so we didn't leave his defensive. He goes in the Rotom here, and uh, he's lucky I didn't have Power Whip. I almost brought Power Whip on this thing, but I have to eat Dragon Tail. Uh, so that's nice. He did, takes damage, and he gets put right back into Shaman. Uh, so we're going to be able to see what item Shaman has his turn. You don't have to wait too much. I didn't really spoil a lot of that, as you see the leftovers now. So that leads me to believe he's more of a defensive set. I'm thinking perhaps he's got uh, Leech Seed. Perhaps Toxic, Seed Flare. He might have Dazzling Gleam for Como. He might also have Substitute. So a, uh, he could have Air Slash also for Como instead of Dazzling Gleam. So we have a couple things here. But I kind of want to I want to see what he's going to have. But I also don't want Licky Licky to not be able to come in on a Seed Flare. That is an important part of Licky Licky's job this turn. But he does not want to stay in at all. He's actually going to go back into Bangarang. And uh, or, uh, into his uh, his T-Tar. Showing me Unnerve, which is fantastic. Uh, I mean, he doesn't have sand, so the Exadrill we know is most likely 100% Scarf. Unless he's a Salt Vest. Uh, but probably Scarf more often than not. Unless it's Crobat Scarf, so. But either way, go to Como. And here I decide to go for Earthquake. I figure it's an Ice Beam, fine. I can do a lot of damage with Earthquake. And uh, it's going to put him within Dragon Dragon Claw, Kale Range. And what does he do? Yes, it was! Soundproof! I can't hear you! I'm the audio version of John Cena! I go for Dragon Claw in case he wanted to go into Crobat, but he does not. And Tyranitar goes down, a big threat gone. Como getting the KO. Now he goes into Fat Pet. And now I want to pause the video for a second and kind of explain my thought process here. So, he goes into Crobat on the Como, which is obviously Como uh, is threatened by this Crobat. He knows I'm not choice in any way because I switch moves. If he did not, perhaps if he did not see me switch moves, he wasn't paying attention. He might have thought that I was choice. It maybe not gone right into Crobat. But he went into Crobat, which still isn't going to help me turn if he's Scarf or Bandit. So he goes into Crobat, and I am a Como, which means uh, I am obviously very weak to a Brave Bird from this thing. I take a chunk. If he's Bandit, I'm dead. If he's Scarfed, I'm not dead. But uh, I take a lot of damage from a Brave Bird. But I also think that my switch is so ridiculously obvious that his one play is to go for U-turn because he does not want a Brave Bird and then, you know, he doesn't want a Brave Bird and then I go into something like, uh, I don't know, I go into any other one of my mons. Yeah, perhaps, he, if he's not Scarf, he does not want a Brave Bird as I go into Starmie, Outspeed, start firing off fucking Hydro Bumps. He does not want that at all or, or Ice Beams or whatever. He does not want that. Uh, I feel like the switch is so obvious. I'm going to stay in 
uh, because uh, I just I should be switching out 97% of the time against this thing. I should be switching out. I have no reason to stay in. Why would I? Which is going to make him think, you know, U-turn's probably the safest play here because he's going to think I'm going to switch, so then he's going to U-turn and get initiative onto my switch, right? So uh, with so that seems like a, a solid idea for a play, right? I think that's going to be what happens. This is that's what I feel is the right play to make here. Uh, I'm gonna stay in and go so and he fucking does it. He fucking does it. We are on top of this shit today. We are on top of this shit. That is the right play to make. So he goes gonna U-turn and he goes into Shaman, which leads me to believe you know he's probably got dazzling gleam. Uh, or sorry, he goes not into Shaman. He goes into uh, he goes into extra drill. And I get a sub up. I get up a sub. Perhaps he wants to, uh, you know, rapid spin. He thought I was going to Dragon Claw. That's fine. Not on this day. I got the sub up. Now, if I can get two Dragon Dances up, I am confident in the fact that I can take out that Crobat. So if he stays in, in any capacity this turn, I don't care if you break my sub. If he stays in, I'm clicking Dragon Dance this turn. I'm doing it. Clicking Dragon Dance this turn. Uh, he's going to flat out switch. And he goes on the one thing I didn't want to see, and that's Crobat because of the Infiltrator. Right, I get the dragon up here. I almost went for a dragon claw. I did not. I was I kind of hoping he would just stay in and try to break my sub. Uh, but instead, he's going to... Uh, I guess he really thought I was going to go for Earthquake there. Then he goes into Crobat. And here, I, I wrestled with staying in for a long time. If I could possibly outspeed him. But I know I couldn't. Especially, I don't know that he's scarfed yet. And I really don't want to risk, you know, Como getting damaged. So, and I have a great switch into this thing. And that switch into this thing is, of course... Go to be Licky Licky. Now I'm thinking, why the hell are you going to Licky Licky when you need something for that Shaman? Well, I'll tell you why. Because I really want to keep that Swampert around now. Because uh, I really, I, I want to be able to deal with that Excadrill. And I think switching into the Excadrill is going to be a bigger problem than taking on that Shaman. Especially uh, with the fact that I have things like a Mimikyu. And I have, uh, I have a, you know, the offensive Star Me that I have. And I want this thing to get to... If this thing goes down, I can effectively uh, sweep with Como. Or, best case, get this thing weak enough where I can take on... Uh, you know, start killing with Cartana. So, my plan at this point in the game was to weaken everything for Cartana. I don't care what happens. When Cartana hits the field, I am setting up for a sweep. There's nothing... That's it. That is what it's doing. So, he goes back into his Gurin. That is going to be his extra drill. He's going to take the Shadow Sneak. Full well knowing he needs to get those rocks up, gone, to uh, to get his crow back in. So here uh, is an interesting, is a little situation here. Uh, so I'm going to let this go out a little farther. So I have, obviously have a Focus Ash, right? I obviously have a Focus Ash. And uh, so it doesn't matter if he has Mold Breaker. It doesn't make a difference. If he Iron Heads me, as long as he doesn't flinch me, uh, my Sash will stay intact. I can probably take him out with a combination of Shadow Claw and uh, Shadow Sneak. Uh, so, but what I, I what I want to do here is is convince him that I don't have a focus sash. I want to make the play like this Excadrill is going to kill my Mimikyu. That way, if I can set it up where I can get Excadrill v Mimikyu later in the game, he'll be lured into a false sense of win condition with this Excadrill. Okay, so in the back of my head, I'm going, okay, I want Cartana to be able to come in and clean up. But I also want to get a later game... Give him a later game false win condition that this Excadrill can be here and take out Mimikyu. Uh, so, and I have I have Swamper. So I have absolutely no reason at this point in the game to risk that Mimikyu. None at all. The thing is, now he is going to add, actually, he's going to make a, a fantastic play here. Is I'm going to switch, I'm going to go right into Swamper, and he is going to predict that and go for a rapid spin. That could have been absolutely crucial for him if that didn't work out. If I went for like a sword stance, knowing that I have the sash, he would have been in big trouble. But, so he gets rid of the stealth rocks, uh, so his crowbat is still safe for now. But still, I, I don't really mind too much. Uh, I can get my rocks back up. And again, his extra drill cannot threaten my swampert at all. And now in his head, he's going, wow, that Mimikyu is going to lose to that extra drill. So it's going to allow him to try to get a matchup that's conducive to extra drill versus Mimikyu, and it's not going to work out for him. So he has Rotom Wash in here. I'm going to get my Stealth Rocks back up, making the, the, that play almost null and void for him. It, all it did was make him think Mimikyu loses to Exodrill, so that kind of worked out for me. Um, I am I am okay with that. Uh, and at this point, again, we're back in the plane of weaken every... Oh, I thought I, I thought I was... I predicted him to go for a Will Wisp here in my Switch, and we fucking go again! So now he goes into Embor. 
which is fantastic. If I can get Embor down to about 60%, uh, then I can effectively... Let me go ahead and pause it again. Oh, 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 no, 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 why, no, 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 what happened, no, 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 there it is, okay, wow, we're skipping around, okay, whoo, that was awful, you saw some stuff ahead, you saw some stuff ahead, it's fine, so, I figured if I can get Embor down to about 60%, then a plus one Kartana can just clean take it out, so, and I'm Scarf Kartana, again, my whole goal at, at way back at the beginning of the game, was to weaken things enough where Kartana could come and clean up, so, enemy number one that I haven't taken out was Crobat, that thing could not be in the field, then we got to take out number two is Shaman. But there will get it to a certain point where if things are low enough, I can more comfortably go for a smart strike with Kartana and just start hacking things down, not even caring that Shaman is there. So Embor comes in, and uh, so there's Embor, and uh, I fear a Grass Knot. And I'm going to find out right now if he has Grass Knot or not. And uh, so I'm going to actually go into Como. He's going to switch out first. He's faster than me, with, which is probably you know, that's a shame. But he is going to go into Shaman, take some of that damage, and, uh, you know, I can't, obviously, I had to fear the grass not there. So, I am going to switch out. I am going to go into Como here, as you saw previously, and you might have seen his sub, but we'll get to that. So, I do sub here, predicting that he might go, he's seen that I'm soundproof. If he doesn't have Dazzling Gleam, uh, he might go for a Leech Seed here, it's possible, but he has seen me sub. So, that was kind of a 50, 50 type play. At this point, uh, now Como's, one, Como's not leaving the field now. All Como's trying to do at this point in time is deal as much damage as humanly possible to that Shaman where I can bring in Starmie, fire off Ice Beam to take it out. So Dazzling Gleam is fine. Dazzling Gleam is okay. I mean, I don't want to switch anything into it. So Como now is always got to do is deal damage to this Shaman where I can come... Now, I, I, actually, even, even kind of more ideally, if I can deal damage to Como, take it out, or he'll, he'll kill me, Going to Starmie, Starmie may die trying to Ice Beam this Shaman, but then that'll get Kartana set up and ready to rumble. Uh, I'll be at plus one, and after the second, you know, after the death, death is not a lot of damage at all. And after the another Stealth Rock hit, Embor will be in deep trouble of dying to my Kartana. So, this is a, uh, a huge turn in the game right here. Uh, if I can, if Starmie can take out Shaman, great. If it can't, that doesn't mean, in the even worse case, I can go into Mimikyu, uh, I can go into Mimikyu, because of my sash, however little I get this thing at with my HP, oh my god, English. So Ice Beam, however little I can get this thing down, I can possibly even take it out with a Shadow Sneak from a uh, Mimikyu. Or even Shadow Claw if I'm faster, I don't know uh, if he's offensive or defensive. But I am a Salt Vested Star Me for kind of this reason alone. He didn't get a lot of HP back, but after another Ice Beam, uh, I, he's definitely going to be in Kartana Smart Strike range. Uh, also, possibly possibly at a Mimikyu range. So, uh, this Ice Beam, even if I don't take him out, there's a chance he won't take me out, and I'll take him out anyway. But, however, Hex giveth, and Hex taketh away my second freeze. My second freeze. Now, I could have kept going for Ice Beams, and he probably would have thought that I'm some sort of choice. Uh, probably Scarf, not Specs, based on the damage output. Uh, but I have to go for Psychic in case he decides... Uh, he wants to go into his Rotom on the Ice Beam. He does not. So, Shaman goes down, and now, essentially, the game has become, how much damage can I deal to everything on the planet and uh, Kartana can clean up with? My only goal, and it's a feasible goal, what can I do to his Mons where I can get a Kartana to come in and kill everything? He goes for Hidden Power, which in fact, this is a, is a great set on his part. Hidden Power Grass, it looks like. So, uh, I am, though, going to be able to live, not uh, another one. But I'm going to find out if he's really... I, I guess I would have found out... I guess it kind of told me he was Scarf because he brought it in on a Starmie. I am going to die, but you guys know what that means, right? It's in Kartana range. Uh, Embor is on the cusp of Kartana range, so Kartana's coming in now. And Gartana's about to do a lot of damage to whatever it wants. See, we're down 4-3 right now, but we have the momentum. He has a lot of mons that he doesn't want to, he doesn't want around anymore. He goes into Crobat, Crobat dies to rock, so I'm unable to get my beast boost up. But that just means we have a nice switch in. He saw a move, that's fine. We have a nice switch in into whatever he wants. He's gonna choose to go into this Embor, which means I can perfectly and precisely sacrifice my Starmie, figure out what moves he's going to be rolling with, and then go into Kartana if Lairbolt does enough to take it down 
with a sacred sword. Which is what I need him to be at. Starmie, gonna take gonna go down, that's fine. We're down three to two, but we have all the tools to make this comeback. We have all the tools to win it. He's at the amount of HP I said he needed to be at. So now we go to Mimikyu, and now I have that Focus Sash. I have that Focus Sash, and this is where it comes in handy. He's going to switch out of the Embor and go right into his Rotom. Okay? Taking some more Stealth Rock damage. Taking I didn't want to go for a player off because I felt like if I missed, that was the game. So I go for a Shadow Claw. That's great. But now I fire out the player off. Which had to hit, and it did hit, and the Rotom goes down. And now, that play from way back then, where he thought he Excadrill could take me out, in fact, is not going to work out for him. Okay, because what's going to happen is he's going to be at about 80% HP. He's going to think right here he wins, or possibly loses. Even if I had just Kartana, it was going to be close. But he thought I would switch into Kartana here to save Mimikyu, because he thought that... I was going to die from an Iron Head. He thought that that was, that was a problem for me, but it was not a problem for me because I had the Focus Sash. So him think, and he's still right here. He thinks I predicted him. I didn't predict him. I just knew I had a fail safe. I had it out with the Focus Sash. He's going to come in. He's going to Mold Breaker. I don't, doesn't matter. He's going to take a Shadow Sneak, and I know it doesn't, it don't, that now it makes no difference. Kartana now wins the game regardless. I'm Scarfed. I have a move that can hit both of them for significant damage. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter if he flinches me with Iron Head right here. It does not matter. He is going to hit me with an Iron Head. Bring me down to my Sash. I live at 1. It does not matter if he flinches me this turn because Kartana is going to come and clean up. I'm going to Shadow Claw. And again, that play way back in the day when he thought he could take out Mimikyu comes all the way back at the end. And it's going to allow me to win this game. Because of the fact that he he thought I was trying to save Mimikyu, but it didn't, I didn't have to. Mimikyu is going to take out the Excadrill. He, and we're learning things today, guys. My Disguise is still up. My Disguise is still up, so it doesn't matter if he goes for a Shadow Sneak. It does not make a difference. He Or a, a Sucker Punch, my apologies. He goes for a Sucker Punch, which is fine. Disguise goes down. Live at 1. We're going to fire off a Shadow Sneak and the Milwaukee Sauce Bucks are going to defeat the player, the Lola Athletic, who started our nine-game losing streak in that virtual reality world. You thought that was real? Welcome to real life. The Sauce Bucks ain't never given up. Not ever.